Okay. So everybody, welcome to the One Education uh, web seminar for your uh, connectivity. Um, and the main purpose for today is getting your EXO up onto the internet. And once that's connected, Louisa has actually uh, um, uh, kindly prepared a little segment in showing you what you can do once you're online. So first things first, um, thank you so much for coming. And we know how busy you guys are, so I'll make this nice and uh, short and sweet. So if you have any questions, feel free to type it on your questions pane on your um, uh, on your control panel at the very top. Should have an uh, orange arrow. If you click that orange arrow, it it'll uh, come up with your control panel, and there's a questions tab there. Feel free to type questions there, so uh, either myself or one of the other panelists can answer them. So with us today, we've got Jay. Uh, he's our support engineer, and we've got Louisa, Louisa, and myself. Uh, are the partnership coordinators and uh, we're basically the people that you get to talk to when uh, um, you call us up. So let's get started first things first. Uh, I want to introduce you to the Android system. Um, just uh, with a quick poll as well. Just quickly answer this one folks. Sorry, I just had a big gulp of coffee. I didn't mean to sound horrible. Okay. I'm closing the poll in three, two, one. So majority of, uh, of you, hang on, I'm just going to show the results. So majority of the, um, of the participants actually don't have their XO ID just yet, but a good percentage of you do have it. So uh, we'll talk to you a little bit more about that. I think that's what Lewis is going to talk to you about later on as part of her segment. I'm going to turn on my uh, webcam just to show you uh, a few things. So hold on a second. Let me make sure I look decent. Okay. So every now and then I'll mention a stick. And uh, just to let you know, this is what I mean by stick. It's any thumb drive um, <laughs> that you can use. Uh, when I say save it to a stick, this is what I'm cool. So it's just an eight gig flash drive, like so. And what I'd like for you guys to do is, um, if you don't have your devices on Android yet, go to our support website, which is on, as you can see on the screen at the moment, scroll down to the very, very bottom and click how to upgrade your system to the EXO system too. So when you click there, you get to see Jay's explanation on how to get that done. And just follow the instructions and you can download the file right about here. Just click on that and save it to a stick plug it in your XO, turn it off and turn it on again, and follow the instructions. Nice and simple. So has anyone, um, is anyone here not on the XO system too? Anyone here still on Sugar? So if you're on Sugar, just click the hands up button or type it on the um, Marek. <laughs> so this is another gentleman you should talk to you guys if you if you've got any issues with your XO. Marek is one of the uh, he's one of the foremost experts in connecting your uh, your your XOs to a Google Classroom. So thanks, Roddy. I saw that you're all upgraded. That's excellent. Okay, so basically, if you have any issues with connecting your, uh, so if you have any issues with upgrading your XO to an Android, please call us. The phone number is, uh, well, it's on of our, it's on all of our emails, but nice and simple, it's one eight hundred double six double three three eight. 
and ask for Jay. So last thing, when you're actually doing your upgrade, just follow the instructions to the letter as what Jay says here in the support page, and uh, you won't go wrong. You will not go wrong. Cool. All right. So uh, it's about one minute past half. Uh, it's 1.31 now. So let's get started in connecting your, uh, uh, your device onto the internet. Now, this is an, a bit of an, an informal um, uh, poll. Who here has issues connecting online? If you can please just um, make yourself known on either the hands up or the questions tab. So who here is having issues connecting their XO online? Okay, Damien, Jennifer, thanks Pete. Uh, Roddy, fantastic, okay, tweets <laughs> Okay, okay. Um, I'm just gonna uh, a couple of um, a couple of troubleshooting things I want to share. First thing, when you're looking at the EXO device, what I'm going to do is the basic principles of connecting it online. Um, so I'm just gonna okay, I'm gonna put uh, I'm gonna click the hands down now. So, there you go. Um, so what we're gonna do today is just give you the basics of connecting it online, but after I tell you how to connect it online, I'm going to go through some basic troubleshooting. Um, and these are the same questions that Jay is going to, um, uh, to go with you. If you call up and say, oh, look, I can't connect um, for whatever reason or so, these are similar questions that Jay is going to ask, okay? Hi, Simone. How's it going? Okay. So I'll just wait until Verity... Uh, re logs in. She, act, I think, she unfortunately um, logged out. Okay. All right. So, getting back to the topic, I'm just going to quickly share my XO. Uh, oops, sorry, that was connection lost. Of course, it is. See, these things happen when you're doing a presentation. <laughs> So what we're running at the moment is something called Droid VNC, and it's a way to wirelessly connect your um, uh, your XO to a computer in the same wireless network, so you can see what's happening. So okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect online. First things first, on your XO, you'll have your home page. Okay? So on your home page, you'll find the upper right-hand side, you'll have this part here where you can find, I'm just highlighting it now, you've got the time, you've got the battery, you've got the Wi-Fi signal strength, and what you need to do is just take your mouse or if uh, if you are more comfortable to do so, just um, tap on the upper right hand side, tap and hold, and drag until you see this menu here. Okay. Did everybody everybody get that far? Now, once you've received, once you've um, gone to that menu, all you need to do is click on settings. So when you tap on settings, you will see all of the wireless networks that's available for your laptop to see. Now, as you can see, I'm connected to the OLPC online at the moment. So I'm going to try to emulate uh, a South Australia. I'll do South Australia first. I hope you guys don't mind. But I'm going to try to emulate a South Australian um, uh, internet connection. So first things first, I'm going to look for the lab one. Here we go. It's a good one. Here we go. With South Australia, you actually need to have something called a certificate. And that's basically a, an SSL certificate you need to preload. Okay? So you need to have that specified and loaded up, and that's a, a, a separate step altogether. How you get to that stage? 
right? is by clicking on the three arrows. Sorry, not three arrows, the three dots here. Oops, sorry, let me start again. Three arrows there. Click on advanced. And it has your install certificates. Okay. Now, the step you need to do before this happens, okay, is you need to have had your certificates already in your Excel, as in it's on the uh, the hard drive of the Excel already. Okay. <laughs> now, Roddy, this is Roddy. This is for um, uh, this is for South Australia. So, um, one good way to actually do it is I'm going to quickly hide this. When you're looking for a topic to connect, say on the on the uh, support website, just yeah, type in okay. connect to Wi-Fi. Okay, and what you'd like to do is click on this that says connecting your school net, uh, to your school network on the Exosystem 2. Click on that and you actually get a map of Australia. So with South Australia and Western Australia, um, that's the one I'm going through because it does have a, a few more steps, but if you click on that, it has the step-by-step -step with pictures here as well, okay? So Pete, I'm just gonna quickly unmute you. I hope I managed to explain a couple of things there, Pete. Mr. Bergen? Yes, we just had some problems. Yep, we just had some problems with the password or pin at the end doing that. Ah, uh, from that we did it okay. Ah, oh, fantastic. So I've put a, a password. Cool. All right, so I'll just quickly meet you again. So just to let you know, folks, each school or each state has a different protocol. So what we want to do is just make sure that we actually have everything covered and that the way we do that is we just put a state-specific instructions there for you. So, okay. Now, if you don't want to type in your instruct uh, the search parameters at the very very bottom in trending articles. In trending articles, you've got uh, connecting your school to your school network. Just click on that. Okay. Now, this is how to get to New South Wales, uh, Queensland, um, in the basically the rest of the country. This is going to be a bit tad bit easier you don't have to install SSL certificates so what you do again on the very same website that I'm going to show you support.oneeducation.org right clicking on connecting to your school network okay so once you're actually on that page, connecting to your school network on the and clicking the state where you come from, I had to do a double check there. I didn't recognize New South Wales. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. So what I'm going to do now is walk you through how to connect it from your EXO itself. So, all right. So this is for New South Wales and the and the um, New South Wales, Victoria, um, Tasmania. I believe some parts of Queensland this is applicable as well. So as before, pull down your shortcut screen. Okay. Click and hold your settings until it, and you can see your Wi-Fi. Uh, networks that's available. Okay. Now we're going to connect to a different 
uh, a, di a different set of Wi-Fi. Okay. What you're seeing now is something that's going to be normal for most of the schools. Okay. Some schools won't have this selection. Some schools are still on the DET website. Um, I'll show you the most common one first. And if there's anyone here who does not have a similar interface than what you see, just click on raise hand or just uh, type something on the chat, okay? So first things first, everybody yeah. click on show advanced options. Okay, and then after clicking on show advanced options, click on proxy settings manual. All right. Guys, if I'm going too fast, just raise your hand or type something, okay? Right. Now that we've clicked on advanced options, you can see there's proxy host name. Hang on, let me get my trusty little highlighter. Proxy host name, proxy port, okay? Oh, yeah. All right. So on proxy host name, I need you to go to that and type in localhost all one word no spaces and on proxy port that's 8020 okay So on the instructions, that's actually stage number right about here. So I think this is like step four or something like that. All good so far? You don't have that screen. Sorry, Damien. Okay. <clears throat> so Glenn... Sorry, Glenn, I'm just going to quickly unmute you, my friend. Hold on a sec. Glenn, can you hear me? Hi, right, Johnny, I can hear you. Thanks. Not a problem. Now, you're not getting the same screen as this. Is that correct? No, right, John, I've got that, and I've already connected my ex so but I'm using the actual department proxy, as in proxy.debt.nsw.edu.au, uh -huh. port 8080, and it's connecting sweet. Um, I wasn't sure if the other New South Wales people are using the local host or actually using the DEC um, proxy. proxy account. Very good point. Now, um, the reason we actually, you know, uh, Marek's using the proxy settings like that as well. Um, and Marek, hang on, actually, um, might be worth opening the conversation with you. I'm just going to unmute you. Marek, can you hear us? Yeah, I can, John. How are you going? Good, good. Thanks, Merrick. Uh, Merrick, are you using Joni at all? No, we're not yet. We haven't got that far. Um, I tried to have a quick play around with it, but given time, yeah, we didn't get around to it, but that's probably the next step. Sure, not a problem. So uh, for yourself and Glenn, so Glenn, the reason we're actually not using uh, the proxy.det is because um, we have uh, an app called Droney, and what Droney does you put the proxy.det settings on that app. So if you go to an app, say Google Earth, or um, let's say Mathletics, these are apps yep. that are non-browsers, and they need to connect to the internet. So instead of you uh, re-inputting your authentication details, what they'll do is these apps will go talk to Droney, and Droney will give them your details so you don't have to re-enter them over and over again. There's another thing that you might be aware of, John. Yes, sir. I'm not sure if Merrick does. At the end of last year, the department provided every school with a Wi-Fi service account that's generic. Yes. Yeah, um, I think in Western Sydney, it's WSR or the, Aru that, the Aruba network or something like that. Um, no, it's actually a generic Wi-Fi service account. Oh. So that... So that you can put that one generic Wi-Fi service account in without having to authenticate all the time. Wow, I have not heard every, of this. 
Every yeah, single, obviously, yeah, we got that as well. And, uh, yeah, we were described from our uh, network uh, support yeah, yeah. saying it's more for single devices that are shared, so to eliminate, yeah, that constant, uh, constant changing so you don't... Yeah, they just punch in the username and password, and Correct. they'll get them on each time. Oh, beautiful! That's gonna that's oh that's gonna that's gonna be a game changer, actually. Hmm. Well, it, it helps here because we only have forty five devices, mm, 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 and mm. we spread them and share them across three hundred and thirty five students. Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. So that, one, that one service account actually connects to the Wi Fi and allows you to get on once you put in the debt proxy allows you to get on the internet without mucking around. Fantastic, fantastic. And you, you don't actually have to use, from the looks of it, you don't have to use Droney at all. Now, just to, just a word of warning, guys. If uh, if it all doesn't uh, go according to plan and um, you're accessing, say, for example, you're accessing Google Earth and it's saying that it's got a network error or something like that, uh, it might yep. mean we need to enter in Droney again. Yeah, that's... That's what I'll be keeping my eye on if yes, I sir. need to move back to this. So yeah, I'm yeah. glad that we're re I'm glad we're recording this so that it gives me that that mental um when we go if we have any hiccups, John. <laughs> Fantastic. Or I may I'll put you on Marek on mute again. Um but I think there's someone he uh hang on. Hang on. Damien, um, I'm gonna un I'm gonna unmute you and uh if you could tell us what step you're at. Hang on a sec. G'day, Damien. Can you hear me okay? Thank you. So what's interesting? I to certainly can. Um, we're up to the, well, we've got up to the ad network, but um, when we're putting in our details, we're just getting stuck with the proxy and the port, et cetera. It's not actually letting us save it to then access the network. Ah, is your network, sorry, because I know you, you're in, are you doing the Department of Queensland Education, or are you using Department of New South Wales Education? New South Wales. Okay, so you should be able to see DET uh, wireless straight off the bat. So I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna show you my uh, my EXO screen, and I'm gonna go back to just gonna cancel that right there. So on that screen that you're seeing at the moment, you should be able to see a list of all of the Wi-Fi networks. Yep. Okay. Is the DET network there? Yeah, we've got that. It's a secured 802.1x. Yep, yep. Fantastic. Um, so if you click on it, does it actually yep. look like this? Sorry, I'm just wait for it. Does it look like that? Yep. So it looks, we've got to that point. Fantastic. So click on advanced options. So in the, in the box at Below there, yep. Yes, sir. And go manual proxy settings. Okay. Now, yep. on on identity, it's normally your uh, first dot last name at whatever yes. domain that you've got. So, so I'd have my first la name, last name, and then at det or at det nsw. It's your network login. So I believe it's det nsw. I think. Hang on a sec, guys. And okay. then do on we the password? use our um, password that we log on with? Correct. Yep. It's just your network password. Yep. Everything else is left alone? Yes. Okay. Now, this is where it becomes fun. On the proxy host name, just put local host or lowercase no spaces. Oh, so what it says host name, that should be um, local host. Yeah, um, what I'm doing is uh, with Marek and, uh, and, um, uh, and, and, um, and Glenn, they've, got, uh, yep. they've managed to go around that one. I want to do it, uh, I guess, step by step as how I know it. So yes, yes, no, I that can, would suit I us. Troubleshooting. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So if you actually put those two in, right? And, and it's 8020. Correct. And press yep. enter. That should uh, that that'll work. Has everyone got that? Like the eighty twenty? It's up there. That's what it should look like. Cool. Hang on. I've got another um, comment here from Judy. Judy, if you don't mind, I'm going to put yep. you on. Uh, uh, where is Judy? Oh, there you go. 
Hi, Judy. Can you hear me? Oh, she's muted herself. <laughs> Sorry, so she's uh, she's muted herself, but she said um, you are correct with DET NSW, but you should see other another yeah. network as well as DET NSW. Oh, hang on. Hi, Judy. No, I'm not I'm right here. Hi. Hi. Listen, I've already gone through this. I did uh, found the network Aruba on my Aruba system, and it was DET NSW. So I went through all of this, and we had to put in so many passwords for the children mm -hmm. that we couldn't share between each other. Mm -hmm. Then I discovered the Department of Education had also put a second network there, calling it my school name, Newara-P. Yes, so yes. So you may find that there are two Aruba networks in your school. Cool. There you go. And when I found my second network, I can do it. Uh, so I've only got to put in the uh, generic password which is no access n number zero uh, the at symbol double c e double s it's the generic one for all of new south wales okay and then you just go on with uh, using Dronny, which works better because you cannot get out well in my school you cannot get out without using Dronny for mathletics and google earth okay now Besides, uh, what I'm going to do, Judy, is I'm going to share that with the rest of the group. So I'm just going to type in what you've just said. So it's uh, another a second Aruba network. And that yes, the password is no access. So it's N naught, the at sign, double C E yes. double S. Yes. Cool. I'm just going to send that to all. So and my print told me it was generic for all of New South Wales. Cool, not a problem. Thank you for that. That's really going to be helpful, actually. But um, that being said, even though you've got, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna just quickly cancel this one. So thanks for that, Judy. I'm going to put you in mute now. So Damien, I'm going to put you in mute again. And now that at least we've got, um, we've got to that level, you've identified that uh, uh, that login. I'm going to go through and uh, explain journey. Okay, so I'm going to mute you now. Great. <laughs> Hi, Helen. Can you hear me okay? Hi, Helen. Okay. I think Helen doesn't have any uh, all, um, microphone. Um, so I'm so sorry. You kind of just it, it, we kind of just sped through that. But don't you worry. This is going. This is recorded. This session, and I'm going to make sure that this gets edited and um, chopped up. Uh, with with a bit of uh, with a bit of urgency because I think the dialogue that we had here is very very good because um, I didn't even know about that secondary Aruba network so there you go okay so really quickly what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and uh, pretend we're using that Aruba network the second one for uh, uh, for the students um, and get that done now. Okay, so what I've done is I'm making a mock-up um, network called the Second Aruba Network in New South Wales. Okay, on the password, as what Judy was saying, is no access and not access. Okay, and before you click on the before you click on save, before you click on connect, it's very important that you make sure you've clicked on advanced options. Okay. Once you click on advanced options, select manual. And you get to see the same bits as we were talking to before. So Helen, what I'll what I've done oops, sorry. What I've done is basically it's the same end process getting there is just a bit different so there are schools with multiple aruba networks there are schools that don't have an aruba network yet 
Um, but uh, at the same time, when you do have that internet access, once you've gotten to that point, you're ready to click on save all the time, click on show advanced options. Okay, so what you need to start, Helen, is hang on. Uh, Glenn, I might get you to talk to uh, Judy via email. Oh, hang on. Damien, you're stepping ahead. Come on, man. <laughs> Mr. Anthony, can you hear me? I can, John. Judy, can you hear me? Yes. Cool. Is it okay if I yeah. give both of you private messages with your emails? That way you guys can converse? That's fine. <laughs> Fair enough. Damien typed in, the group made me do it. Come on. <laughs> okay. I'll solve that issue in a second, okay? Hold on a sec, guys. <laughs> oh boy. I'm just going to quickly do this, guys. Hold on a second. Alrighty. So, Helen, I've just given you uh, Glenn's uh, email so you guys can converse together. And, Glenn, I've just given you Helen's email. There you go. Okay, folks. Now let's get back to it. <laughs> I'm setting I'm setting you up with uh, Mr. Glenn Anthony. So <laughs> he's got a specific question for you, Helen. Okay. Now getting back to it, guys. The whole issue here. Wow. Oh no, not Helen. Ah, wrong one. Sorry, I was supposed to do Judy. See, this is what happens when you're trying to multitask. It doesn't work. Maybe that's because I'm a bloke. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is get to droning. Now, um, with, ta with um, Damien's issue here, he goes he's got authentication issues. Um, that's a very good point. Majority of the time, the reason you're having authentication issues is, number one, the passwords are incorrect or the username's incorrect. Those are the two main issues that you'll normally find. Okay. Now, I'm just going to quickly run through this because uh, we're running, a, running out a bit of time. So back onto the XO. Okay. So I'll just quickly recap. You've uh, located the settings menu, you've located the Wi-Fi network you'd like to join, and it's now all about typing the correct password in. Now you've typed in the correct password, click on advanced options. You've clicked on advanced options, you've typed manual for the proxy settings, right? And for the proxy host name, type localhost. And for the proxy port, type 8020. Okay. Now it might seem complicated, but you know what, folks? It's all here on this web page here. Connecting to your school's network using the Exo system too. Cool. Okay. Now. Back onto the XO. Sorry, guys. So, back onto the XO. We've already saved that um, still grayed out. Hmm. Our tech support guy is actually on the phone at the moment, so he won't. He's uh, not able to answer. Um, okay, hang on. Helen, you don't have any um, uh, any microphones on you at the moment, do you?
Okay. So, um, Helen, when it comes to connecting the internet, uh, I think it's best in this case if you call one uh, call us on the one eight hundred number. Just want to type that in. Okay. That way, because I think this warrants uh, an actual uh, phone conversation so that we can talk you through. So sorry about that. Um, is the only thing that makes it grayed out is, say, for example, if you've entered in incorrect details. So, so um, Helen, even though it looks grayed out, if you even if you press connect, it doesn't. Did you put the identification as well as the password? Sorry, um, if you call, we'll be able to troubleshoot it. So we just really need to get a move on. <laughs> okay. So folks, once you've already identified the network, you've connected to the network, you've clicked advanced options, once you've inputted localhost and 8020, that's when you put the password on, that's when you click on connect, and you'll have these lines indicating that you've connected. It's on the upper right-hand side. Fantastic, you've got it, sweet, cool. So once you've got that, down and you've got a bit of lines on the Wi-Fi bar, go to your EXO app drawer. That's the little highlighted yellow button at the bottom there. That's the circle with the X-Man on it. So click on that and you get to your app drawer. Okay. So on your app drawer, you've got Joni. Okay. So whoever's not on Droney just yet, just click the hand up icon and um, I'm going to slow down a bit. Anyone not on Droney? Okay, so I'm going to click on Droney. Cool. Okay, now Droney, the steps for that is very similar regardless of what state you come from. And the instructions for that are all written, again, on this web page here, but a little bit further down, about middle down the page. Okay. Okay. So as you notice, this is the entry screen of Journey. You've got your log screen up there, and at the bottom, it just says off on the gray uh, on the gray bar. Okay, so just slide your finger from the right to the left. Okay, and make sure that your proxy port is registering as eight zero two zero. And make sure that your Wi-Fi settings is right underneath it, click on that. Now I'm going to unmute Mr. Taylor. G'day Damien, how are you going? Excellent. That's good. A bit of peer pressure, huh? <laughs> they just bully me here. Oh, that's no good. Oh, I heard, I, I heard pain <laughs> in the background. <laughs> okay, so you're saying that you have authentication issues. Now, could you tell yes. me a little bit more about that? Um, so a couple of people, when um, they typed in, it was just saying that it wouldn't um, authenticate. Yes, when sir. they've done it, so it retyped. So everyone's now got some the uh, Wi-Fi bars on it, but Beautiful. now it's a matter of making sure it's connecting from there. Cool. So now um, this is uh, this explanation is for you guys as well as for everyone on the group. What Droney does is, like I said, it basically uses your authentication and duplicates it for all of the apps. It doesn't have to be right. an app that need, that's a browser. So right. Mathematics, Google Earth, they all need to go online. So they go to Journey, yep. 
that's why we put the um, the port as 8020. So instead yes. of your, um, I'm going to use some technical terms here, instead of your signal going out and handshaking to the internet, it's being directed to a drone who then handshakes the internet for you. Okay, middleman. Yeah, basically. But um, the good thing is you don't need to re-input all of your passwords every time. You need to go use the internet on a non-browser uh, app. Okay, yes, yes. Cool. Um, so just bear with me. Now that uh, uh, make sure everyone is on the same page, no pun intended, um, where, <laughs> where they can see this, when they can see the similar, um, a similar screen as what you're seeing on the, on the display. Cool. All right. Okay, folks, I'm meeting you again. Thanks, Damien. Thank you. Okay. So, guys, now that we're in this level here, I, ho I hope everyone's in the same spot. Uh, Roddy, how's everyone going over at um, uh, at, uh, at your school? Everything okay? Cool. All right. So, moving on, we're now at this level here. The icon that is highlighted should be the Wi-Fi that you're in. So whatever Wi-Fi you've connected, it should be highlighted in blue. Just press that, and you get the, the menu for that. So all over the menu. Now, I always use this here as a landmark because this next step, you, we all really need to pay attention here, okay? Now, once you've located that grayed out proxy type HTTPS, right, I need you to scroll until it's close to the top, okay? See where it says proxy type? Make sure that it says plain HTTP proxy the host name, click on that. So uh, for Merrick and for, I think it's Merrick and was it Glenn that said that? Um, so um, hang on. So basically when you're looking at this, this is where you put your proxy.det or if it's a Victorian proxy, um, uh, I think it's um, education.vic dot gov I think I can't remember exactly um, but basically the proxy that your IT people have given you this is where you put that in okay cool and the port remember how I said um, as um, it, it as it was really eloquently put um, by Damien, Drone is kind of like the middleman. The port here needs to be 8080 because this is the guy that talks to the internet for you. Okay, so how do you change the port? Just click on it. And when you click on it, you'll be able to get that edited. Okay. Now ignore these. Focus on this. So, username, it's going to be your network username, password, it'll just be your network password. Okay. Now, I know that some of you have have been experiencing really bad internet or they've got um, uh, what shall I call it a slow a low um, uh, low internet speeds or it's weak Wi-Fi so just keep trying guys it I know it can be frustrating at times but please let uh, I'm gonna let you know now uh, we are working on a way to make sure that instead of a 12-step process that we're doing now um, we'll be able to put together an app that you guys can download from the App Universe that'll make connecting to the internet a two-step process. 
Cool. Yes, already. That's a good point. <laughs> I knew you'd like that one, Tamara. <laughs> um, so for uh, uh, for Roddy, uh, just to clarify, username and password is the one we use to log on in for debt. Yes, it's going to be your uh, first dot last name at betnsw and then your password. So I think for students, I know my daughter. She's in a um, in Sherwood Ridge Public School. Uh, her username is Jordan. Ivy dot Vagara at something, and then her um, her passwords just her class whatever her class is. No, it's not. Hang on, I'll put you on uh, unmute tomorrow. Could you explain that to us? Hi, Tamara. Is it working? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay. Sure. Um, I, are they using the Aruba at that school, or are they using the Wi-Fi's, um, like the little WAP devices in the room? I think a lot of them will be using the Aruba. Oh, okay. It's a little bit different. That's right. If they're using the Wi-Fi, it's not. You just got cut. I'm, I'm, I'm hanging here, mate. <laughs> Hello. Yes, I can hear you now. Oh, sorry. It might be the microphone that I'm using. Um, yeah, if it's the WAP device, then it's not at DET New South Wales, all the rest. It's just their first name dot their last name and if they have a number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But if they're using the Aruba, it's different. So, sorry, I didn't realise they're using the Aruba. Yeah, some of them have uh, – because I think there's only about 20 or so schools that are using the uh, uh, the One oh, Education okay. WAPs. Yeah, yeah. So, most of them are Aruba. Oh, no problems. I'll go back into my cave. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Tam. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> oh, well. See, this is what I love about this whole program. It's the network of teachers that are helping each other. Okay. Hi, Mr. Anthony. Hi, John. It's Glenn. Um, be aware there are about um, 15 schools within the state that aren't using either. They're using oh, their really? own school devices. Exactly. We're a, we're a self-managed school. Oh, uh, yes. We don't, I use, we don't use DET, et for l or any of their applications or, yeah, or yeah. Um, devices. So, so how again, do you... It's still, Sorry, go ahead. That's all right. Again, it's a little bit different. We actually use our own um, wireless access points rather than the Aruba. We haven't um, picked up any of the One Education ones. So, again, if they're using a standard um, access point, it would come down to um, the link through the DET internet. So we actually have to type in the whole lot. Oh, wow. Complete user, the complete username at debt.nsw.edu.au. And then your network but, password. Exactly. But we're able to use that generic school account that I told you about before mm -mm. to actually to do that for us so we don't need to do all the mucking around for every student. Fantastic. That's pretty cool. Well, thanks for letting us know that, mate. That's really helpful. So, but um, no problem. cool. I'll meet you again. But that was really, really cool. So far, this is the most interactive uh, in terms of uh, getting the feedback. This is really, really good. Thanks, guys. So now that um, uh, we're down to this, the, there's only a few more steps left. Like I said, Rangan is working really hard to get the developers to push this out as quickly as possible for this two-step process. Um, so we're now down to – okay. Now, the, where we left off, we've put the username, we've put the password, we've made sure the proxy name is correctly inputted, we've made sure the port is correctly done, okay? Okay. Oh, no, Helen, don't worry. <laughs> we're here to help. We're here to help. <laughs> Rody. I blame Glenn. <laughs> I just had three questions here, mate. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. I'm going to give your email to all of these teachers, and you're going to get hate mail. <laughs> all right. So let's get back to the topic. Um, once you're actually um, on Droney, 
what you're doing now is you're trying to make sure that your internet talks to Joni first before you go online, if that makes sense. <laughs> okay, we're having too much fun here. This is supposed to be a PD, you know. PDs are not supposed to be fun. <laughs> okay, so. Okay, so going back to topic, what we're doing now is making sure that we have now correctly entered. Okay, so how do you know if you're in, uh, on a WAP or Aruba? <laughs> okay, um, so Rod, if you're on Aruba, it'll say WSR schools, and this is generally for the Western Sydney schools. Okay. And for self-managed schools like uh, what Glenn was talking about, they've got a different setup altogether. Are oh, you not hooked on WSR? Okay. You, you must be hooked on this gener generic DET wireless. Is that right? What wireless are you using, Miss Celeste? You're not using wireless. Seven six seventeen sixty AP, um, and that so and that wireless network is available throughout your school. Is that correct? I think we had that chat sometime uh, when when I first spoke to you. Cool. All right. So. Um, Aruba is the generic term they use for the wireless access point New South Wales Education has purchased for um, uh, basically for the schools. Yeah, so um, some schools decided to implement it, some schools didn't. So, um, so basically, yeah, so that's basically it. Everything else is exactly the same in terms of connecting online. As long as you got to this level, you've connected to your 1760 AP, you've connected your um, your Droney. Now for your, um, oh, that's a good question. In terms of Droney username and password, um, I, I'm going to, um, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my foot in my mouth and say, Jay's gonna answer it for you. Oh, hang on, he did, fantastic, there you go. Jay answered it for you. <laughs> cool. All right, so now that we're in this stage here, we've put in your username, we've put in your password. Just click on this little buttony thing here. See the upper left-hand side should have the Joni icon, and it'll have a back button. Press that twice. Okay, when you press it twice, you should see the settings bar. Okay, and when you see that, just go from left to right. Okay. And Jay's going to answer that for you, Rudy. Okay, when you, that, when you get to that spot, all you need to do is just follow the rest of the instructions, which would be Pressing the gray button and trusting this application, and you're good to go. Okay, 
that's basically it guys so technically you should have your um, machine connected to the internet um, so I'm going to pass it on to my colleague Louisa now um, but before I go please feel free to type in the questions um, because as you know you've got um, Jay working on the back uh, on the sides as well he's got um, he's got admin uh, he's got organizer privileges so you can have a sit down and chat with him too and I'll pass it on to to Louisa now All right, guys, I'll leave you to Louisa. All right. Thank you, everyone, for sticking around. I appreciate it. Um, so I've actually uh, I've completed the sugar training myself recently just to see kind of what the differences are between uh, sugar and Android and what you're familiar with and uh, what's going to be new here. So um, what I've done is uh, my Android right now, uh, as you hopefully can see it, Good, yeah, there it is. So um, it's pretty much as it looks like uh, when you reflash uh, to the Android System 2. And uh, what I've done is I've actually signed into the XOID as a grown-up. That's why I've got the Play Store. So now that John has uh, taken a wonderful amount of time to connect everyone to the Internet, uh, hopefully, uh, if not, you can still just follow along. So what we have here uh, preloaded on the XO when you reflash it to Android, uh, it comes with the App Universe, the Avatar Creator, and the XO ID program, and also Lensu Create, uh, which is a really fun app to use uh, with the students, and that's been one uh, where the license has been donated to us very generously uh, that we are able to provide for free with the XO. So I'll start off by showing you the App Universe. So uh, on the Sugar, you probably were accustomed to seeing a home view and a list view. So right here will be your home view. Uh, you get the home page of the Android. If I scroll here, you'll see a blank screen where you can add more apps. And then scroll the other way, you'll see some more functions. Uh, the buttons at the bottom will stay the same, and those are also interchangeable. Uh, what are the main functions for uh, the Android will be a long hold. So if you click and hold any sort of icon, you can move it around uh, from screen to screen uh, and back again. Let's put that one back. And same with the ones at the bottom. You can move these around as well a little bit. The long hold. And on the home screen here, uh, to see what you would normally see as a list of you on Sugar is now your app drawer. So that's the little icon at the bottom with the X in the circle. And here you'll see all of the apps that are loaded on the XO. So I've downloaded most of the ones that you'd find in the App Store, uh, so, or sorry, the App Universe. So uh, some of these uh, you won't see right away, but you can go and download yourself. Uh, we have lots of fun ones here. Um, is there any questions about particular apps that you're looking for or uh, specific activities you'd like to use with your students? You can uh, type that into the questions there. Here we have, um, we have Andy's World, which is a uh, fun phonetics uh, and kind of a reading game. We have Easy Dice, which is a dice rolling, kind of a math game. Uh, Earth, Google Earth you'll be familiar with. Uh, scrolling over, there's a, an effects pro, uh, elementary, this is a periodic table of elements. Um, yeah, GLXY, Galaxy, it's a gravity imitator, that's a fun one. There's a homework manager for students to kind of keep track of assignments. A movie studio, which actually works really well uh, in athletics as well. So an app for drawing, perfect. That's going to be my first example. 
So down here in the very bottom of the screen, you'll see here, this is gonna be my home button. When, no matter what app I'm in, it will be there. So I'm gonna click my home button to go back to the home screen. And I'll show you uh, Lensu Create. So I'll open up this app. So the XOs, uh, thanks for that question, Helen. The XOs will uh, be kind of configured individually, but it's definitely a great activity to get the students involved in. Um, it's easy enough now with the app universe uh, as it comes preloaded on every single XO. Uh, they can all open it. All of the apps on there are free and there shouldn't be any advertisements on any of the applications that we provide. So they're, they're safe for the students to download but not to get into too much trouble. Uh, there's only one racing game in there, <laughs> uh, and then the odd chess game. Um, so here we are in Lens to Create. So I'm going to go to a new recording. Now this is just looks like your basic kind of paint program, but the fun thing with this is you can actually record what you're doing. So you probably saw, if you joined the webinar a bit early, you would have seen uh, John show a YouTube video of a uh, automated, automated kind of drawing. So here, I'll just use the pen. I pick a color and draw, draw a heart. Why not? You can change the background. Oh, I got the eraser. Pick an image, you can uh, load in an image. Here we go, we got the board. So now I can be like I'm drawing on a chalkboard. So this is a fun drawing app. And then uh, you can hit chord. There we go. Recording can get to 30 minutes long. So yeah, I can type hello, fun stuff like that. <laughs> and if you want, there's actually a button here as well where you can uh, include a video of yourself and then you can play it back. Oh, I'll stop the recording first. And save it, hit done. There we go. And you can enter a title. And save. So the fun thing about this is you can make it into a video. And then in that video, you can move it into the movie studio app as well and play around with it there. So we'll go back to the home screen. So that's a really fun uh, drawing out. That one is usually about, I think it's about $10 in the app store. So that's been a little bit of generous donations to us. So we'll go into the app universe for you to see here. So right now I'm on installed. So these are all the ones I have installed. And I'll click on available. So there's a few actually more available. So once you've installed it, it will move over so you can kind of see what you have and uh, what you still have available to you. So once I've installed an application, it will show up in my app drawer. So if I want to move it from my app drawer to my home page, I'll click and hold. So like I said before, we'll click it and we'll hold it directly onto the home page. And there it is. So it'll be there on your first page when you open it. And then I'll click and hold again. And if I want to remove it from my home page, I just drag upwards to remove. Now this will delete it from the home page, but not from the XO itself. So if I go back to my app drawer, it's still there. Are we following along all right? Do we have any questions so far about the apps or how we move around the XO? So 
seem to be doing all right. Wonderful. I like that. I like that for sure. All right, so what do we have next here? So uh, as you'll see, um, if I go into the app universe, on the top there, it says, click to sign in with XOID to see more apps. So this is prompting you to sign in as a grown-up or a teacher. Uh, and when you sign up as a grown-up, you'll be able to see applications such as the Google Play Store, uh, the Teacher's Mathematics, and the Teacher's Socrative. So what I'll do is I'll click on that then, and we can log in. Now I saw we were about 50-50 with XOID. Uh, I'll go through a little bit of it right now, uh, but I'll, I'll just focus mostly on the applications. Uh, but with signing with XOID, if you're doing it on the Excel, it should be fine. If you're doing it on a computer, I recommend using Chrome or Firefox to avoid any issues. So I'm going to click Grown Up here. And just to show you, I'm going to have click don't have an account, sign up now. This will launch into the browser. Now the first person to sign up for your XO ID in the school will be your uh, XO admin or administrator. Uh, this person is typically going to be the principal. Uh, the ICT contact that we would most often speak with, or uh, the teacher kind of advocate for the school that's just driving the program. So that person is the only person to create the school secret. So this is the page to create an account. You enter your name. So just to show that Louisa. My school. So once you start typing it in, it'll pop up. One education or one laptop. There it is. Here's the school secret. So you'll see a little box pop up. It's password set by one education admin at your school. If you're the first admin to sign up, secret enter. Be set for the rest of the school. Pick something unique and fun. So something you'll remember. Not too long, not too short, not too many commas or apostrophes. Um, and if you do, if you are the administrator, you get your password, there's a forget password option. So this will be a secret you share with your teachers and all the teachers will use it to create an account. And then below that, you'll enter your email and a password for your own personal account. So I'll just go back from that and I'll go back to the initial login. So I'll go now, and I'll show you what the dashboard looks like. Click the green arrow. All right, so I'm not assigned to a school yet, but that's okay. Now I'll go to the teacher admin dashboard. So if you attended any of the webinars last week, you probably would have seen this already. Here you'll, uh, you can change your name, change your password, uh, and you can uh, set up an avatar and create your classes. You can add students to the class. Uh, as a school administrator, as soon as another teacher signs up, the administrator of the school will receive an email and uh, they'll be able to verify that teacher so we don't have any imposters trying to come in as teachers or some sneaky students. So you'll see here, we verified John, verified myself. We'll click on profile. So this is my own personal account, my first name, my last name. I can change my password, update my profile, go to classes. Got a few classes set up already. I'll go to English. So as an example, I'll click on the green button down in the corner here, the plus sign. I'll enter a, a student name. We'll use John. There we go. There we go. 
John Doe, why not? John Doe can be part of the class. You can choose if the student is indigenous or male or female. John's going to be male and we'll click add. So you'll do this for all of your students. You want to uh, enter the student's full name just so they can identify themselves when they log in. And the student will be added to the list. So once you have all of the students added into the list, you're going to unlock the class. So we recommend that the easiest way to do this is you're going to unlock your class in the classroom with all of your students. All of the students are going to be ready with their XOs. So we'll hit unlock the class and unlock. And so it'll be open for 20 minutes. So this gives you about 20 minutes to log all the students in and the class will close. So again, no imposters can come wandering in uh, on the XO. So what we'll do, we'll go back to the home page while that class is unlocked. Go back to XO ID and uh, we'll see I'm going to log out as a grown-up and log in as a child. That's fine. So we'll pick a school, click on school name, one that top for Child Australia. We'll click the green arrow, go to next. So you can kind of just talk your students through this as they're doing it. And there's Miss Stewart with the funky glasses. <laughs> Mr. Vergara also has some fun glasses on. Oops. Oops, sorry about that. Let's try that again. Click the green arrow. A little bit sensitive on the keyboard, that's all. So click Miss Stewart. There's only one student in my class today, but that's all right. We'll click on John Doe. Sign into this device. So John Doe will see sign into this device. Click the button, and we got a funny little robot here. So you'll have, as a teacher, the your XO in front of you with a class list. And all of your students will go through that process, and they'll see their own unique little robot icon. So I'll go back to the teachers again. And I'm going to reload. There we go, and the page comes up, and there it is. So there's John Doe, John Doe and uh, his little robot. So you'll see here, this robot looks a lot like the one we saw on the previous screen. We know that the XOs match. We match the name. The class is unlocked. And we can click on the last icon here to see the green check mark. So once you go through that process with the students, you shouldn't have to do it again once they log in and until they log out. So if you're using the same uh, class set with the same students, they can grab the XO and uh, they'll still be logged in. Do you have any questions about XO ID or the sign-in process or how to, uh, how to get the students logged in? Okay, Susie, you get the message that ID has stopped. Hopefully this isn't a, a connection issue. Now, when we first uh, had the XOID program launched, there were a few bugs that we uh, had come across, and uh, I'm hoping they've been fixed by now. Is this uh, something... Here, Susie, do you feel a microphone? I can happy to unmute you. Let's see where it is that it stops. Susie, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Wonderful. So at what point are you getting this uh, error message? Um, I've been able to, to log on and use it fine most of the time. It's just at the moment, um, when I'm trying to log on, I'm 
getting the ID has stopped. So, yeah, I'm wondering if that's something within the program or we have had connection issues in our school mm -hmm. um, over the last couple of days, whether mm -hmm. or not that could be causing it. Yeah, unfortunately with the internet connection, like as John had explained before, uh, you can sign in with the Wi-Fi and you'll get access to Chrome, but getting internet access to the applications would use uh, Droney. So if, uh, did you manage to connect your Droney previously okay? Um, what we found was when we connected up via our in-school network, because I had my IT team down, mm -hmm. um, they found that Droney hooked in automatically. So I didn't have to go in because when I logged when I log in, it comes up with Droney's automatically connected. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, look, we got Jay here with uh, an answer for that. Uh, it says, navigate to settings, apps, ID, and click clear data, then try again. So let's see if we could do that together. Let me uh, try that with you. So the top right-hand corner, if you drag down, you can go to settings. Oh, sorry if I click that a bit quick for the, to catch up. And then on the left-hand side, under device, you see apps. You click apps. You see that there? So if you kind of want to refresh one of your applications, if you want to clear any sort of passwords or uh, any cookies that might have been stored previously, this is how you would do it. So you can see we'll scroll, scroll through some of the apps here. You can see got a few. And there's ID. Are you uh, following along with this, Susie? Uh, yep. Yep, so if you click ID, and if you see there is clear data, so that just kind of resets it uh, if there was a, maybe a, some lag before with the application. This hopefully would, um, would resolve that for you. Let me know how that goes for you. Yep, I'm signed in. Wonderful. All right, I'm just going to mute you again, Susie. Glad we could resolve that. All right. Now I'm happy to help anyone uh, troubleshoot a little bit with the uh, with the XO. If you wanted to see some more applications, if you're welcome to put a comment in the box. So while we're on this page, you can uh, again, like I mentioned, you see all the applications. This is where you could uninstall an application if uh, one of your students goes in and downloads Tron or something like that, which is actually quite fun. So Lindsay was a fun uh, kind of drawing app. Uh, we have Andy's World here, or Molly's Rhymes, which are both uh, good for younger grades. So they'll, they'll be focusing on reading, on pronunciation, on uh, phonetics. Uh, the Effects Pro up in the top there, we'll start at the top there, the Effects Pro, uh, the Photo edit Editor, uh, the Elementary, like I said, um, here I got a list actually, let's see. I've recently added uh, descriptions to all these applications, so if you've gone in and looked before and you've not really known what any of them do, most of them now have uh, a little description kind of giving you an idea. So yeah, elementary is the periodic table. Uh, the ES file explorer is where you'll find all your downloads. Uh, Fex is a practical viewer. Gilga, if you see there's a little Bluetooth signal. Now that is a chat. Um, I, I wish it worked a little bit better. Uh, it, it's a Bluetooth chat, so you can Turn on your Bluetooth uh, on the XO first, as you see here. We'll hit allow. So it's kind of like a, a close by Twitter. So you can kind of update a status. You can chat to people nearby. 
the only downside of this is you can't add a username to it yet, so you're not really sure who you're talking to, but the range would be quite small, so for it to reach outside of the classroom uh, would be pretty impressive. So just so you can kind of see, shows me. So yeah, it's just showing you to other Bluetooth devices. So we can go back now. I'll show you again. I showed you the home button first. We click on this icon here. If you can see, this will show you what's been opened. So this is where you can see what's open and uh, what might be slowing your EXO down. So it's always a good idea if you've been using the EXO for a little while, you can close a few things. So I'm going to swipe up or swipe down. The app will disappear. There it goes. It's gone. I'm closing App Universe. I close Lensu. I'll close Gilga. And we'll go back to our app drawer. So there's a few fun ones here. GL Tron, that's exactly what it, is. it sounds like. It's Tron, it's a bike racing game. <laughs> uh, if the kids get a little bit of free time, they can definitely play along with that. Uh, you'll see a lot of Google apps. So Android is a big partner with Google. Uh, when you reflash your XO, it'll ask you for a, a Gmail account. Uh, as a teacher, I definitely recommend having a Gmail account just because it gives you full access to all of the... Uh, oh, thank you, Tamara. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> I see we're going a little bit over time here. I'm just helping out people who are willing to stick around. We still, we, we still have a few more attendees. Um, just wanted to make sure everyone feels a bit comfortable with the applications. Is there anything you see on the screen that you'd like me to demonstrate? We'll go back to the home. Oh, good question, Susie. So the XOID, it, it has a few different purposes. Um, it's a bit of a management program for the school and for teachers. It gives them a bit of control uh, of who is using the XOs, uh, what they're using it for, uh, who can come and go out of the classrooms. Um, it's being developed so there'll be a bit of a interaction between student and teachers in terms of uh, sharing files, things like that. Uh, it helps us uh, have an idea of um, how many schools are using different applications on it. Uh, Lensu being one of the licenses that was donated to us, they like to know uh, how many times they've been used because they gave us an allocated amount. Uh, it's a bit fun with uh, the avatar creator. That's one thing I don't think I've shown yet. So it gives the students something to kind of identify with with the XO. They can create their own little, oh, I need to log into XO today first. I'll log in here quickly. But uh, let's see here. Let's go back. I'll be changing my password after the webinar. <laughs> uh, it's the avatar creator here as well. Oh, it's probably a bit cold at the moment. So they can go in. The students can create an avatar. Teachers can create an avatar uh, and save things along the way. Put some hair on them. Put some clothes. Bit business like. Does this look like any of the teachers? <laughs> so 
So the XO ID will also give teachers access to all of the functions. So if the teachers have a Gmail account and XO ID, they'll have access to all of uh, Google's benefits and all of the uh, benefits provided by One Education. Uh, you know, all of these apps in the App Universe we're providing for free. Um, and then some of the, you know, ones that are donated to us, we can provide uh, just to XO users. So if you have the, uh, if you're signed in as a teacher on the device, you'll be allowed to access things like the Google Play Store, uh, and uh, like I said, the mathematics and soccer for teachers. And uh, it's a way for us to release some of those applications, specifically to XO users. So anyone who might have information about the app universe, uh, but is not affiliated with the school, uh, kind of controls how, uh, you know, how the apps are being used. Uh, we don't want to abuse any of the uh, donated licenses. Does that uh, help you a little bit, Susan? All right. Well, then I'll wrap it up. I appreciate everyone uh, tuning in. Absolutely. Uh, we are going to be doing these every Thursday. Uh, we uh, will be continuing with the troubleshooting with some of the connection for certain schools. Uh, we'll continue to let you know more about apps. Um, we are getting a few exciting apps uh, over the next a week or two. We've been in touch with a few, uh, few new partners there, so we're really excited to release those uh, in the coming days. And again, these are recorded, so you will be able to watch these afterwards. Uh, you can have a browse around the different, uh, the different pages that we offer and such as. Yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys.